The most important thing people or us that we forget is to is the importance of understanding how things work. The importance of understanding how an industry works. From Kona Juden to Pierre, you may not see this was see. I'm very sincere and humble this was see. Formerly known as Wazima Tonsel, bringing you a show about creative entrepreneurs live from the landmark that not only birth as a street culture but also formalizes a street hustle. On today's episode we have Justice Rendani Mukere. Advertising taught me um that idea is king, which makes sense. But when I was in advertising as an art director and shifted into making my own work after hours, I felt like um driving my creativity through idea was not natural for me. And the natural place I went to was to uh capture emotion. You know, I wanted my work to have a feeling and to unpack either how I feel or to help me go back to things that I hadn't processed and my art helped me process that in you know finding those emotions and going through them and uh, through that process having those emotions into the work that I'm creating so yeah that's how I I think I archive or capture emotions but how do you then come to say yeah now we good with this advertising thing yeah now we sort of go with this photography <laughs> thing Yeah, now let's go back yeah. to the arts, you know. Um that wasn't entirely the journey of pivoting and leaving the things behind. I think because social media only shows the highlights. Mm. You feel like how oh, just this thing I need photograph. Or just this thing I need in advertising. Or just this I haven't. Yeah, I I haven't. All those things I obviously professionally started in advertising as a creative professionally. Mm. Um then I shifted into photography. But I was still doing photography in the commercial industry in advertising. Mm. So I just brought a different discipline that serviced the industry I already work in uh, in photography with 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 my new creative expression. Mm. Right. Quick question to interject, right? Yeah, this yeah. is for the photographers at home, the ones who are yeah. watching this. How do you then get into commercial photography? It's very simple and hard at the same time. Look at all the photographers in the commercial space. Okay. Look at their portfolios. Look at your work. How do you access Go. this? Go. We, we're gonna. Um, we, to, see, yes or no? I wanted to yeah. blank for someone yeah. who's not even who's into not, photography. Yeah. Okay. Go to. Red Hot Ops the website go to Lamp Post go to Hero Management and um Agent Emma all of just look at all photography production companies mm. look at the photographers they have look at the one you like the most mm. look at their work and that will give you a portfolio of the photographer that you like and how they've what type of work they've created mm. for you to be a commercial photographer you must have work that shows your ability to do commercial work you know sure. simple then take that interpret it in your own style mm. you can copy but don't copy it as you are seeing Uta Tende or Steve Tenchel or all the amazing guys and you copy you know yeah for me copying means that okay this guy shot a campaign with people having a drink blah 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 go recreate that in your own way find your own type of people create a new scenario of people drinking find a location that is different but still is maybe inspired by what this this person did mm. the other thing that it's well let me not say it's it's the the easy part about doing this is that everything is done already mm. what i always do if i'm interested in getting into something i'll go look at for example when i got into photography <clears throat> i went to look at the photographers i, I like then i took the works and put them all so down yeah. ne? then i asked myself what about this do i like You know why do I like this so much? Then I try to unpack it. Okay, cool. 
what type of person did this person use? You know, okay, type of person, tick. What location did they use? Try and understand the time of day or the lighting they used. Unpack it like, <clears throat> okay, maybe there was backlight, there's, you know, 45. So you engineer the whole process. Yes, unpack it, nitpick it. Then take those principles, apply them to your idea. It's simple. You know, same as directing. Mm. I didn't go to film school. But I will be honest, advertising was a great teacher for me. So I look at all the ads that I like, you know, Ian Pons. Lots of guys, they were for Masati, you know, Greg Gray. All the amazing film directors that I really liked. Yeah. You know, I looked at their work. What about this do I like? You know, okay, cool. The performance is specific. Okay, I like how it feels. What makes it feel this way? It's the type of character they choose. It's the the the, the film lang the language of the camera, how it moves, the lensing. Mm. You know, when when a person is in is very deeply emotional and all that, you know, they probably on a long lens closer so that you can, you feel that emotion a bit more. You know, so you nitpick all those things and take that and apply it to your work Damn. that's it you simplified the whole process like yeah. whatever you like just like Econ. Econ. like I love podcasts yeah I don't have a podcast should I ever want to have a podcast I'm gonna go to the podcasts I like and look at them okay cool the camera was standing here yeah they cut here you know they do this, they do that. Oh, drink champs. They've got an interesting uh, location. <laughs> they are drink you know, what's the... Then, when I get all those things, yeah. I find my own idea. Then I'll ask myself, okay, what's going to be my switch? Mm -hmm. Maybe my switch is we open with a statement from an influential male that was a positive guy, whatever. Oh, you know? Nice. So you need a... A switch. A switch, a, th a point so of difference. Positive stuff in the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a point of difference. That's all you need, you know. Because there are lots of people doing all the things we like to do, but those that stand out are doing it differently. Mm. They have something that makes it memorable. As someone who's been in the creative entrepreneurship field for a while, oh, yeah. how sustainable is it? Is there a future? This is just for the kids who are yeah. just still wondering what... Maybe I should just stick there by advertising. It's yeah, nice. yeah. I can pay my medical aid, everything, my car insurance. You know what? It's a good question with so many layers. Né? I think the creative industry has opportunity and will forever have opportunity. The important thing is understanding where you are in your journey. You know, some people feel like they look at maybe someone like me and my twin brother and just want to arrive at where we are. Not considering all those years. Not considering the journey I took to get to where I am. And the journey is the education, it's the school, it's the sacrifice, it's the internship, you know, it's your humble pie, you know? Like, you know, you'd want to be a painter and obviously what's, what's important to acknowledge is that everyone's journey is different. You know, what it took for me to get here is not going to be the same as another person in this time, mm. you know. But there are things you could look at, you know, like mentorship, you know. You need to work on entitlement. You shouldn't be entitled. You are not entitled to opportunity, you know. You need to create your own opportunity, you know. I look at you, for example. You could have um, had this idea and have the entitlement for someone that's already doing it to give you a shot. But I assume you didn't do that. You scrambled and you... Start off with voice notes. With what you have. You used what you have to do what you can. You are here now. There is another place you are looking in to get into. Mm. Right? And still, you can't be entitled to get there. You need to do this until the opportunity opens. Maybe it won't even open. Maybe something better for you will open that's bigger than this. Mm. 
you know so in our journeys we must always remember that looking at someone's journey might not be the best thing because you might be limiting yourself because what might be for you could be so much bigger than what you are hoping for but because you're looking at someone else we born the bigger opportunity you know <laughs> yeah every time these moments hit I'm like hmm. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a viewer and, and a host at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this show is the mentorship we're all seeking for yeah, from yeah. different directions. It and is. accessible because yeah, you yeah. can't answer 100 DMs. You still yeah, have you a can't. Life. You still have to maintain this. Yeah, yeah. But this is a glimpse into justice, what we can learn from you and your journey. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you for coming, most importantly. But yeah. how do we, like, you know, I have so many questions. But Please, the, I've the, got the time. You know, the real question for me is like, mm. How do you become a professional at something without ever getting employed in it? Like, it's not like you woke up and said, I'm going to get a job refining yeah. artworks for this gallery and that gallery. You woke up and actively started making art. Yeah. But how do you become a professional artist? Yeah, that's a good question. So the most important thing people or us that we forget is to is the importance of understanding how things work. The importance of understanding how an industry works, you know. For, for example, we look at, most people look at the art industry as free reign. Ah, people, you just paint, you have, we're having fun. You paint, then it's sold for 40,000 or 40 million, whatever. It doesn't work that, that way. The art game is an industry. And every industry has a way in which it works. Mm. So when you are getting into a new space, you need to spend time understanding how it works. And that is, again, go to all the artists you love that are participating in that industry in a professional way. Look at their work, look at their websites. There's a common thread. An artist, there's an artist bio. Mm. An artist, a professional artist, most of the time they will have an, a website what's in that website you'll find their cv and the cv is where they've shown what they've shown with who like from when they started if they started it will show they went to this school you know and these are the credentials or so they've done an interview like this with this institution they've been collected by this obviously a professional artist that's been practicing for many years will have like an incredible um, CV that yeah. it's hard for you to see yourself in that but you need to start with what you have you know so when you look at that do your website do as many artworks as you can and don't do them for sales because you might not sell when you are building yourself up you know it's that thing where entitlement comes in where oh I'm painting now and you just want to start painting and selling. It will work for some people. It might not work for most people. Mm. And for us, most people, you need to spend time understanding how, to, how it works. You need to spend time building your portfolio. You need to spend time building your style. You need to spend time understanding the industry. Why? What does it take to be in an art fair? What does it take to be represented. We just want a solo show us. Like, I've been painting, give me a solo show. It doesn't work. It's a it's it's an entitlement. Some artists practice for 10 years and they only get their solo shows after 10 years. Mm. All these other 10 years they've been dabbling with uh, being invited for group shows, being invited to art fairs or not. Sometimes you just do your studio opening and you know, people come, look at your work, they buy. So spending time trying to understand how it works is social media and the internet has created so much access to way more than we could have. Mm. Go follow, go to your favorite artist, look at who they follow, follow all those institutions, like their works, comment, talk. If there's a story, talk about how this makes you feel. You know what that does? It puts you in their radar. Post your work. A lot of people think, yeah, I'm an artist. If I post my work, they're going to copy it. If they're copying your work, it's a good thing. It means you're doing something right. And if you're a creative, you always have a better idea. 
So it's fine. That's Surrender your work to, to the universe, man. And if you think because being an art, when you are an artist and you're painting and no one is buying and you give up, you're not an artist. We are not creating work for sales only. You create your work for you. Create those artworks. Enjoy them. Let them sit there. Hundreds of them. Mm. When your day comes, you're going to have a hundred artworks. And they'll say, whoa, you've had all this work and no one. Then you can do back-to-back solos. You can do, you know, but opportunity finds you at work. You can't create 10 art- artworks then. So you're like, yeah, I, I'm waiting for the work to sell. <laughs> so that's my advice, man. Understand how things work. Yes. Spend the time there. You spend know. all these years understanding, reverse engineering, everything, crafting. What's that one lesson that still haunts you to this day? Hey, man, I know. Entitlement. Entitlement. It haunts me every day because it's so innate in us. You know, you create something that you strongly believe in. Ne? And when people don't see it, it hurts. Mm. That's entitlement. No one owes you the love you you feel you deserve. Everyone is entitled to their own choices, to their own taste. So if you are creating whatever you are creating and you just want people to bow down and say, yo, just listen to him. The creators. Uh, so for me, the biggest lesson has always been entitlement. You know, According to the film industry, with relative... Uh, experience and knowledge and taste and I'm doing what I can do but sometimes the industry reminds me that you are just another guy bro and that happens all your life you know I was an art director in advertising doing well but it also reminded me that dude you're just another guy it's not your comeback yes then you do and yeah maybe this is another second big lesson and let me tell you this, ne? you can be at your best today and the world is celebrating you and that can end and that will end. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts, you can be there too. The crowd. Yes, it's not forever. Everyone has their seasons. Everyone gets the light to shine on them. Everyone gets their darkness. And it's going to come. So you must always know, you must not be entitled to you being the best for the rest of your life. It doesn't happen. Your day is going to come. You know? My day is coming. <laughs> Everyone. I'm saying the day comes. But yeah. during this whole process, mm. to remain, I don't know, I want to say waterproof, malleable. Mm. Mm. How do you actually sustain a creative business? Mm. Because you've tapped into advertising, you've done one, two, three. You mm. guys have had your own advertising company. Mm. Now you're running your own art mm. studio. You do one, two, three. How do you maintain a creative business? Um, business is, is very hard. But business needs you to understand how that things shift. And sometimes you need to shift with the things. And sometimes you need to understand when to move on, mm. you know, because you can hold on to this thing that the industry has already moved past it and you are just holding on to something that's no more, you know. So the sustainability is try be to have your pulse on the finger, you know, try be consistent with what got you into that space. Don't stop, you know, with this podcast you can't stop because the opportunity you were looking for hasn't arrived. hasn't arrived. You know, you need to push on. So yeah, business business is tough, man. Business is not easy. And you must know that you'll never arrive at a place where it's free falling. Like I've been doing this for 10 years. I, it's really silly. Imagine It doesn't happen. It's going to take you to wake up and show up every day for the rest of that business's life. There's no downtime, you know? How do you know when to be a team player? Because yeah. you've been in different scenarios. Yeah. You're an artist, but you're an yeah. artist then 
want to get a representative, you also have to let everyone do their job around yeah. you. Yeah. Um, Cause sorry to interrupt, but cause mm. like a lot of us, we find ourselves in these opportunities that we're praying for. Mm. We've created, we've taken your advice, we've created the portfolio. Mm. Now they want me there, mm. but how do I become a team player? Cause I also have my personal politics. Like you created your portfolio with other people or you created no, I created my portfolio. Mm. Now I have the job. Yes. Justice has hired me. Yes. How do I become a team player? In, Understanding in, my limits in the work environment. Oh, uh, that's very important. I think, again, doing the work to understand how things work will teach you. You know, if you look at every industry, creativity comes from us, yeah. all right? But where there's a client that's paying, you need to understand that you need to create work that's answering to their brief first, and second to that, it must answer to your creative uh, interest or what you want to breathe into that thing. It must be a creative, the creative journey with the brief that someone is paying for must satisfy you creatively, but mostly it must tick their box. So you need to understand that. And a lot of people that just want to arrive at the top think that, oh yeah, I'm now a photographer. I'm just going to shoot what I like, how I like. It doesn't work that way. Even in film, doesn't work that way. Even in a feature film that is yours, mm. doesn't work that way. You need to understand that there are things to tick if you didn't put up the money. If you want to have that whole creative control, I then put up your own money. <laughs> you know, it's tough, man. <laughs> well, no. And then we get to this junction where you've directed so many things, you've painted mm. so many things. Mm. It's always the one question. I always ask this question, right? Mm. Because... I don't think there's a straight answer, mm. but there's a thread we can develop over time how people mm. who've been in the field long enough mm. do things. How do you actually know what your worth is in different scenarios? Not the actual budget. Always tall about like mm. when I'm directing, mm. actually I need to leave the house at minimum for like 40k. How do you get to that point? You know what? That thing when you're on the come up, you must never think about. The, 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 your worth is the opportunity. Your worth is the opportunity to be called. That's what you need to. And maybe this is more advice for people on the come up. You know, if you are spending time thinking about Nizongi Pamalin, how much are you, you know, you are focusing on the wrong thing. Mm. You know, what you need to invest your time in is the opportunity. Like, what am, am I going to be shooting for? money or whatever you know their budgets and things forget about that look at longevity you know then when you've built yourself up when the demand is far greater than your need for opportunity then it can shift then things like getting representation comes in mm. you know red hot ops lamp post you know agent emma hero all those people then they can look at you because they are, they are industry professionals as production companies. They'll say, okay, cool. We can bill you out at 14 grand a, day, a shoot day. If you feel you are above that, it's a tricky thing because these people are the aspects, uh, the, the, the professionals of that sector. No one will want to bill you out for less than your worth. So you need to understand and be humble enough to know your place you know but i know a lot of people rush to yeah maramina this you know i want i want 50 grand a day because you had someone like steve tensho gets that or you had someone like me or my brother gets that i don't get that but you know hypothetically speaking yeah. now you have an entitlement to that but you haven't Work yourself. worked yourself to that space the reason someone like Steve is right at the top he's been shooting from the 90s the clients know him you know the, his product is waterproof you know he delivers at the top of his game you know he has an experience that you don't have yeah. so you can't compare yourself then we come to pulling the race card yeah they're doing this because I'm a young black you are focusing on the wrong thing. Focus on the opportunity. Build yourself up. Build your portfolio. Then the demand will meet you. Mm. 
when you are at the right place and your fees will go up, then all good, man. We must be humble and not be entitled. Our final but most important question mm. for anyone who's watched the show more than twice. Yeah. And everyone is going to troll me if I forget. Yeah, yeah. What's your word to the youth? Please look into the camera. Uh, what's my word to the youth? Yeah. Man, I've got so many things to tell the youth. Say all of it. Um, the first being entitlement. You know, we should never be entitled in all aspects of your life, in all aspects of, of your journey. Opportunity will come um, in different ways. You know, no one is entitled to opportunity. You know, and if you the opportunity you seek is not coming, um, create it for yourself with what you have. Um, remember, the other thing that's so important that I've learned in my journey is... Um, Humility has opened more doors for me than my talent ever has, you know, by far. Um, just being kind, being genuine, being gentle, being honest with myself first and being honest with those around me.